Hey guys, it's Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we went to the shirt show this weekend. Uh, met up with a bit, great bunch of dealers. I uh, was able to talk to a few of them um, and was able to buy a few coins. Now, uh, let's get this video started. I hope you guys enjoy our episode. We didn't get much footage of uh, of the show in particular, but we did get to sit down with Keith from uh, East Silver Scrounger on YouTube and uh, Rick. Uh, he's at the show a lot. We actually interviewed him a few times now, and so uh, let's cut to those interviews. You guys are going to really enjoy them, um, and then we'll come back and show you guys some coins. Okay, we are here at the Shirts Coin Show in San Antonio, Texas with Silver Scrounger. You want to introduce yourself, Silver Scrounger? Yeah, so like you said, I'm Silver Scrounger on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, I started off with doing some uh, silver stacking, and next thing I know, I'm like, hey, I can do a YouTube channel on this, and started doing that. Uh, that got me into into the constitutional silver and and stacking that. Next thing I know, there's some really nice ones that I saw in there. I'm like, wow, dude, this has got to be worth more than just the silver. So I started getting into the numismatics. Next thing I know, I'm collecting coins and stacking silver at the same time. And then uh, before I know it, I got a channel sponsor, and now I'm selling coins, and it's just been whirlwind over the last year. So how has the show been for you so far, Silver Scrounger? It's actually been really good for my first show ever setting up to sell. I, I feel I've done pretty good for the limited amount of inventory I have that I sell. And you got a lot of good networking in, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, I love working with uh, with Drew, with, with you guys at uh, Acoustic Collectibles, uh, Blake with Houston or uh, Royal Houston Coins. And, uh, and then there's a few others that I mentioned that are on my channel here and there, and, and uh, a couple of different coin dealers out here in the, in the San Antonio area. Now, I know this about you, and our viewers are going to be interested in knowing this about you. You are a veteran. You've served. Can you tell us about your experience and uh, you serving this country? Uh, definitely. I uh, joined pretty much right out of boot camp because I knew I wasn't going to college or right out of high school, sorry, and did the full 20 years. I uh, retired out of the Navy in uh, 2014, and I've been all over the world. I've probably been to more countries than most Americans have been to states, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Well, we are so thankful for your service, and we appreciate you, Silver. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and show. We are back with Rick Plants, the bust half expert, the bust half king in San Antonio, Texas at the shirt show. Did you want to tell us a coin show story? Sure. I bought a, uh, a $20 gold piece, a 1904S $20 gold piece uh, on, on, uh, on graded. I uh, sent it into uh, PCGS, it was a beautiful coin. And I uh, sent it in PCG just to have it graded, and it came back mint state 65. I paid two thousand and fifty dollars for that coin. The coin is now worth forty three hundred dollars. And then I'm going to send it off to CAC. Hopefully, no CAC. It. I'm hoping for a gold CAC. Uh, if not a green CAC, work too. Um, also, I bought a uh, I bought a. Uh, an 1893 Isabella Quarter. It was a commemorative coin, beautiful white coin, uh, in an old green PCGS holder. I'm sending it off to CAG, and I think I'll get a gold CAG. I looked them all up on uh, auction records, and there wasn't one white coin in there. They were all dark or ugly toning. So I think I ought to get a good. Uh, uh, good sticker on this one. 
And then, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I bought this really neat piece. It's that scent right there. It's on a dime planchet with two dates and two faces. I bought that at the last show. I'm going to show you that coin. What other coin? Let's see. I thought that was pretty unique coin. It's really rare. The last uh, auction records I looked up uh, were 63s and 64s, mid-state 63, mid-state 64s. This is in a 65. The last auction records I saw on um, that year even were over three grand for that coin. So I like the errors. I'm going to try getting some of your other errors in here. A nice off-center buffalo. And then this uh, uh, this uh, uh, Jefferson on uh, uh, a one cent planchet. So the last one I had two of them, and the other one was a '64 full step, actually. So I call you the bust half king. Yes. Can you uh, explain how you are the bust half king? Well, I'm number one in PCGS registry, and I'm number one in NGC registry. Uh, I have uh, approximately 580 of the 772 Overton varieties. The, uh, and how many years has it taken you to acquire all those? I started collecting uh, bust halves uh, 40 years ago. But as far as the Overton numbers go, I started doing that about uh, 15 years ago. I think when, uh, as soon as PCGS came out with the registry, I was, uh, I was, I was one of uh, the first ones on the registry. I was number one for the first uh, five or six years, and then, um, and then I was uh, knocked out uh, by uh, a Dr. Link, who has more money than God. And so he beat me out. He was up there for about three years, and then uh, when he uh, sold his collection, I became number one again. So I've been number one for the last three years in PCGS, and I'm also number one in NGC in, in, in that registry for the Overton varieties. I had to uh, call them up to get them to do it because they didn't have that in there, so I got them to do that. Did you want to show them some cool uh, yeah, bus gonna, tabs? Yeah, I'm going to pull some up here on my uh, trusty iPad here. Pull up a real nice one. I wanted to find the one that's uh, let's see here. No, how about this one? No, I don't like that. The uh, there's some really nice toned ones if I can find them. I like them when they're toned. It's uh, called uh, the uni. And in other words, on the on the reverse, you'll see United States. It shouldn't be there. It's not. It's not supposed to be there. Actually, on the front, on the obverse. The. Uh, that's one of my coins. Yeah, probably. Yeah, this is my 1815 over two. I bought this on eBay. This is about a uh, $5,000 coin. I bought it on eBay for $685. About eight years ago, nine years ago. And it, what it is, it's a flawed planchet. And you can see it right here on the, on the planchet. You can see the, the right there. And so they wouldn't, they wouldn't put a grade on it. If they called it uh, 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 damaged. That is a rare coin, by the way. It's a hard coin to get. Then I have... Uh, so if somebody wanted to start collecting and setting aside bus tabs, where would you start, I guess, as a beginner? As a beginner? Uh, I always look for the... Uh, the the hardest dates to get and it depends on how you're going to collect them if you're going to collect them by variety well then obviously you want to you want to get a, you want to get the Overton book you want to get this the bus tap bible right here you want to get this book and this gives you all the information you'll need to determine what variety you have um, 
I would say try to go for for, uh, for the harder coins to get, like the 15 over 2, the 17 over 3. Uh, if you're just going for uh, not varieties, but just just for the, uh, the the date, like if you're going to do a date set. If you're going to do the varieties like I do, well then you want to, you, again, you want to start looking like for this one, this is a, a punctuated date. It's a 1817 and there's a little dot right there between the one and the seven on that coin. You might not be able to see it because of the toning. And then you'll have uh, 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 another one, the 15 over 2. You want to get to harder dates because as time goes on, the harder dates, the coins that are that are, um, are uh, harder or more expensive. Harder or more expensive. As time goes on, you're buying all the cheap coins, all the cheaper uh, lower uh, lower dates. You know that are easy dates like the 31s, 32, 33, 34. There's they're they're in abundance. But the earlier dates, the 1794, 1795, the 1801, there's only two varieties in the 1801. There's only one variety in the 1802. So would you say that we're on the ground floor of collecting coins as, as far as pricing? and Because you always think, okay, it, it may be cheaper tomorrow. Do you think that that's going to happen, or do you think they will continue to increase in value? No, I, think, I, think, I think the harder dates always increase. In value, I, just like Morgan dollars. If you're going to buy more, if you're going to do Morgan dollars, then you want to you want to start with the the, the 93s because you can get an 830 anywhere. Everyone has it. Not everyone has a 93s or an 89cc. You know, so those are the that's 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 why you want to try to buy the harder dates to get the 1809s, the earlier dates. Those are the ones that are really tough and more expensive. Uh, they get up when you get up into on circulated or, or AU, then then they'll be uh, a high AU in a in an early date like an AU 58 and 1809 is probably going to be about uh, two grand or more. You know, so you want to buy those coins. I, 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 the cost, you know, is maybe prohibitive for some people, but if you save up and get those, then you're ahead of the game. If you start buying an 1836, which yeah. are very common, or 1834. Yeah, you're not going to pay a lot of money for it, but then again, you know the value of it may may drop down the road. Yes, sir. Just like uh, Morgan dollars have, you know. I mean, a uh, Mint State 65 Morgan dollar ten years ago, you'd probably pay 250 dollars for it. Last year, you could buy them for 100 and a quarter. You know. So that's that's what I'm saying. But the 1893 S's, not a problem. You, they never really go down in value. They're always they're always in demand. People want them. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Rick, for your time. It's all right. I appreciate uh, your guidance, and the bus tap king is out, right? That's right, baby. I'm out. Gone. Hello, everyone. It's Casey here with Acoustic Collectibles. Um, there's been a lot of stuff happening in Europe that we are aware of as people in the United States and the world. And we wanted to take a moment to pray about that, as well as another item that God has put on our heart. We have gotten to know, know Rick over the last year, year and a half. And I started talking to him at this last show, and he revealed a few things about his personal life. He didn't ask me to do this whatsoever, and I'm not going to reveal any of that private information. But I want to pray for him and his wife, Patty. And uh, let's just get into it. Lord Jesus, we as people of the United States, we don't know what to do in this situation in Europe. We don't know what to do in this situation in Asia with China and Taiwan. The only thing that we can do is ask for wisdom and pray and seek your face in this time of uncertainty. Um, it's scary for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are in harm's way and we want you to protect them, bless them, give them wide wisdom and guide them. And we'd also like to pray for 
rake plants and uh, paddy plants. Just put a hedge of protection around their family. Heal Patty's body. Guide them, bless them, and lead them to you. We are so thankful and humbled by our viewers and our experiences, and we thank you for humbling us and providing for us. And all these things, in Jesus' name, amen. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please hit that like button. Uh, comment your thoughts down below, and we're about to hit 2,000 subscribers, so make sure to subscribe. Um, it's going to be a fantastic, awesome milestone, and we're excited to hit it with you. Uh, but let's get back to today's episode. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed those interviews. Now we're going to show you guys some coins. We ended up buying a few from Rick. Here are a few that we got from Rick. We also got uh, that commemorative from Rick as well. And we got a nice three cent piece from Silver Scrounger. We're going to show you guys that in just a minute. But let's get started here on the bottom row. So as you guys can tell, uh, the most variety that you're going to see is probably on this bottom row. We have uh, a nice 1909 VDB Lincoln cent with the True View. I bought this coin just because I think it had enough eye appeal to sit in the shop. And we just sold our last two VDBs the other day. And I really wanted to stock up on something interesting for you guys. Uh, there's not any color on the coin, no spots on the coin, which gives it that, you know, a little bit of added bonus. You know, you don't want things that kind of distract you from the main point of the coin, which is the luster and the details. So, pick this one up. I thought it was a no-brainer. Here's another one that I uh, really enjoyed as well. We bought this one from Ted. I'll include Ted's information down below as well. This is a 1938 Walking Liberty Half Dollar. MS65 by PCGS. The reason why I bought this one is because it's really close to the key date 38D and so I wanted to set this one aside see what I could do with it see if someone would pick it up. I'm not you know we've been selling a lot of common walkers but we haven't really been selling some better dates like this one so you know sometimes it's just getting yourself into the right shoes and the right frame of mind and taking a leap. I think this coin deserved it. It has pretty good luster really nice gem state luster there and just a few kind of hits in the field, but other than that, just a pretty outstanding coin. Really looking forward to adding more coins like this to the coin shop, just because there are you know a lot of nice walkers out there, and it's a good series to follow. This is a 19, or I'm sorry, 1868 uh, shield nickel, and it's a proof. There's only 600 of these that were made in 1868, and I thought this one had tremendous eye appeal. So you can tell the kind of the mirrors there, and when you aim it down and pivot a little bit, you can tell the distance. Or I'm sorry, the, the difference between the fields and the details on the coin. It's a kind of a black background, and uh, the details do really pop out. I don't think this one would cack, just because you can see those really faint spots right down by 1868. Um, it's pretty hard to tell from this from this photo, but um, I like the coin a lot. I don't really buy these too too often. But when I have a chance to buy a beautiful coin like this, I really want to take take it up on that take it up on that because someone's going to like it, and um, that's kind of where most of these coins uh, you know work and generate from. Is that if I do enjoy the coin, I'm going to buy the coin if it's for the right price. But it really starts with you liking it, how it looks, and maybe someone else will agree with you. But here's a coin that we don't pick up too often. This is the 1873 close three. Two and a half dollar gold lib, great AU58 by uh, NGC. I like this coin because you know it's not too expensive, and the gold's kind of been interesting as of late. So we wanted to try to jump into a new market with this one as well. I think it, you know, I didn't think it was an ugly AU58. Sometimes you get those really dark or rubbed AU58s, or they've just been through a lot. I think this one still has some remaining eye appeal, some remaining luster that gives it that that warranted buy from us. And so, well, who knows what will happen with this one, but I like the coin overall, and you know, I think in 2022, gold's going to be in an interesting place, and that's somewhere where we want to follow, and you know, learn more about the series, uh, gold libs and $20 saints, stuff like that, but here's a, show, here's a coin that we actually bought on eBay this weekend. This is 1883, uh, no cents, V-nickel, rated MS64 by PCGS. The main reason why I bought this coin is because it is in the old rattler holder, as you can see. 
there is a kind of distracting spot right below the one. But other than that, I think the coin was pretty nice from the eBay photos. And the holder is pretty intact as well. Not many issues or scratches on the coin. Sometimes you just get a really unattractive holder, which takes away from the coin's uh, overall eye appeal, in my opinion. Sometimes you have to crack those out or get them in a new holder. But very nice start to the first row. Let's continue with these Indian head sets. This is a 1900 Indian head set graded MS63 Red Brown by PCGS. I enjoy the kind of the color in the uh, in the background on the obverse here. I do think there's some interesting contrast that I wanted to pick up on. And what has been interesting about the website is a lot of people have been buying the Indian head scents. So when I ran into a, a few of these and I thought they were pretty enough, I wanted to set some aside and see what you guys thought of them. And so we ended up buying around five of them right here. This is a 1907 uh, Indian head scent, great MS64 red brown, kind of the same story. This one doesn't have a fingerprint on it, which is which is a good thing. You just don't sometimes don't want those distracting fingerprints or spots. When you flip it over, it still has that kind of remaining red to it. That brown's kind of taking over the, the details on the coin, as you can see by that wreath and one cent. And so a lot of these are pretty nice, and they're super affordable for Men's State coins. This is an 1890 uh, Indian head scent, great MS63 red brown. This one has a few distracting parts on the obverse here, but uh, like I said, when I bought them kind of in a bundle deal, I thought they were worth it. And uh, I still like the coin overall, but you know, not my favorite of the bunch. But when Rick offered me all these uh, in a bundle, I couldn't pass them up. And so maybe it, someone else will enjoy that one more. Here's my favorite Indian head scent from the, the group. This is an 1893 uh, MS64 red-brown Indian head scent. The reason why I like this one is because it has a touch of toning on the obverse, but it's not so distracting that it, I don't know, sometimes they have those really vibrant blue or purple or just things that look artificial. But um, maybe I could put a true view up for you guys right now, show you guys this one. It has kind of an interesting color on the face of the coin. And so this one was probably my favorite one of the batch. And it still has some nice remaining reds and the, brown, the brown's just not, it's not taking over the coin, if that makes sense. It has more of a red look to it than a brown look to it. Here is the last Indian head scent of the video. This is a 1902 Indian head scent, great mint state 63 red brown. And it has the same story as the previous kind of common date Indian head scents. Uh, mainly a lot of brown. This one has a slight spot right above the one on the reverse here. But like I said, super cheap, affordable Indian head scents. Something that would fit well in a few collections. And I haven't really seen these uh, come up for auction too often. So definitely a good opportunity to buy a few of these at the show. Now let's show you some coins on the next row here. Here are some of my favorite coins of the show. We showed you that Indian head scent. But these commemoratives really were pretty awesome. Now, uh, when you take a look at this Bridgeport, you could tell why I kind of picked it up. I thought, you know, the, the coin overall luster was fantastic. There are some slight hits on the face. It has been, uh, you know, there's been some hits just from other coins. But, I mean, check out this luster. Just a stellar coin. Love picking up coins like this with a lot of eye appeal. And, you know, something. there's just no distracting parts on the coin, which makes me very happy. Here's a hue knot. I think that's what they call it. Uh, it's got M MS64 Hue Knot graded, uh, and this one is graded by PCGS. You can see by the old green holder here, the luster is still pretty intact on the coin, and there's no really distracting parts of it, which I like as well. I got this one from Rick. You can kind of see, I think there's like a polish line right here. It's not actually a spot, but I like this coin. The holder's been through a little bit, but uh, I just don't find too many Hue Knots with, with this much eye appeal. Normally I find them, they're like gringy and and kind of have that crusty look to it. But this one was pretty cool. And it was, like I said, in that OGH holder. Uh, now we're going to show you guys a few peace dollars here. This is a 1925 uh, MS64. And the reason why I picked this one up is because it has a slight kind of rainbow end of roll toning on the obverse here. Offering this one pretty cheap. I think I got this one like $2 over gray sheet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Jack Copeland actually sold me this coin. But I thought it had enough eye appeal and kind of interest to pick it up. I normally don't buy ones with toning just because most of the time they're ugly. But this one has a slight kind of, like I said, a slight rainbow hue to it. So I thought it warranted a pickup. 
But most of the time when I buy Peace Dollars, I buy the Blast White ones, like, like the ones we're about to show you here. Uh, but let me show you guys those ones now. This is a 1925 Peace Dollar graded MS64 by PCGS. Uh, the reason why I picked this one up is because it has, you know, there's no problems on the coin and I like the, the luster on it. With, with, like I said, with most Peace Dollars, I try to get some with interesting kind of color or I try to get them very blast white, very attractive. Uh, when we flip over this coin, you can see there's just no spots on the coin. Um, and when, like I said, we were offered a lot of these coins, some of them just like uh, just like this one at Gray Sheet. And this one we were offered at Gray Sheet as well from Ted Williams. I'll include his information down below. He was at the show as well. Pretty good guy. Um, this is a 1923 Peace Dollar. This one has a few spots on the obverse, but as you can tell by the luster, it's pretty phenomenal. A lot of common dates here, but like I said, I just like coins that have a lot of luster, a lot of uh, eye appeal, just like this Peace Dollar and the previous one. Uh, the, but the luster on this one's probably the best of all the Peace Dollars. Uh, I'm super excited about that one. It kind of has a weird, interesting holder on it. Maybe it was the person that graded it. I'm not really up to date on the history of how NGC holders coins and has certain kind of backgrounds like this one. Uh, this one is a 1923 Peace Dollar. Has a spot a little bit above the head, but bought this one because it was in a Rattler holder. And the other one that we just got in recently sold pretty quick. And these ones can add a little bit of a premium to a coin. Uh, like you saw on the back here, we were offering this one at 100 bucks, just because that's where they're selling for, and sometimes they're selling for even more. So uh, when you get a chance at a show to buy one like this, or if you want to go to our website, you can have a nice coin in your collection like this Peace Dollar. But now we're going to show you guys kind of the biggest parts uh, of the video, the reason why uh, we kind of almost ran out of money at the show. It's been a crazy weekend. We were offered so much, but let me show you guys these. Here's some of the bigger ticket items from the show. This is uh, two coins that we ended up picking up for one of our clients. His name's Richard, really cool guy. And the reason why we picked these ones up is because it's an early date Merc. Um, overall, a blast white coin, nice full bands as well. And it's pretty affordable without getting too expensive. And so we bought this coin for him, um, kind of with him in mind. And we really thank you for the opportunities you've given us so far, Richard. It's been a tremendous pleasure. Um, this one is a 1938. Proof Mercury Dime. The reason why I bought this one is because I thought it was nice, uh, you know, a nice kind of blast white appearance, a nice proofy looking uh, appearance. It's not a cameo on either side of the coin really, but uh, still an early date proof. Wanted to pick this one up as well. Now, let's talk about the backstory on these two. So, we were at the show, uh, Blake was at the show from Royal Coins, uh, and a guy came up to him and wanted to offer him coins. And so, he, he took a look at it, he passed, and he called my name out. I came over and we started talking. He ended up selling me these two coins and these two 21Ds up here. But let's start talking about them a little bit. This is an 1881 Morgan Dollar graded MS64 Dimple by uh, NGC. I bought both of these coins because um, I like to just buy Morgan Dollars when they're insanely attractive. This Dimple was offered to me at a pretty good price. We were able to flip it on the way home. And so, you know, and it's a little bit of a tougher date as well. In 64 Dimple, I think these coins are going around for 900 bucks. And so that was that was something to kind of understand about that coin. And this coin right here uh, is an 1897 Morgan Dollar, great MS60 PL by NGC. Sorry, this is an O Mint coin, but an 1897 O is pretty tough to get, um, especially in proof like. This one, when I when I pulled it out, I really wanted this one more than any of the other coins just because it's so hard to find in proof like. I think price guy on this one was like, like what, 4,500 bucks, which is way too much money. The last one I think sold for 1552 on eBay. So uh, I offered him less than that and he ended up taking my offer, didn't even question it. Um, but this one is actually going um, to a wholesaler this week, they paid a pretty good premium on the coin, but like I said, 97 O's and proof like you just can't find. So most of the time they want to buy something like this and, you know, offer it to their customers. But here's a coin that we bought from Silver Scrounger. This is uh, 1852 three cent, uh, three cent piece. Uh, this one I think is fine, which he also graded as fine as well. Um, but 
I've been buying these just because a lot of people have been asking about them. I really want to start to buy some coins and holders. XF all the way to MS kind of kind of great, but this one did great just because, you know, it was a pretty nice coin and we want to, you know, give back to local dealers that have really poured into us. I know Keith um, makes a lot of great content on YouTube, so you guys should go check him out. And he gave a great interview today as well. But I'm very happy. Thank you, Keith. Um, let me show you guys the last few coins here. This uh, is a 1921D. Pretty common stuff here. We got that in the group deal, like I said. 10 bucks under gray sheet for both coins, which is pretty cool. Um, and so we are able to flip these pretty quickly just because we have a guy that uh, likes to buy 21Ds. Um, he has a big client base for those. And so, uh, you know, just, I don't know. I think sometimes, you know, you can make a quick buck and move some coins that you really just don't want for your shop. You kind of want stuff like this, and these just we just didn't want to keep. Um, here is a 1906 Denver uh, Barber Quarter. I bought this one because it was offered to me super cheap, and it was just a nice hole filler for anybody that wanted it. I think this coin um, is pretty nice just because I like the just the way it looks. I think it has some old cleaning on it maybe, but either way, still pretty excited about this coin. Starting to move into Barber's like we were talking about previously. And we ended up buying a raw one as well. This one has a nice original look. Nice Barber dime from 1898. And so, yeah, hopefully we start to move more into those soon. We bought a lot of proof Barber's, but we want to kind of get some in-state Barber's that have a lot of eye appeal. Just for something for you guys to look at and possibly purchase. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's roll it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please uh, hit that like button. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of the coins? What do you think of the dealers? Do you want to meet them in person? Come on down to Texas. Uh, that'd be awesome. Um, and subscribe if you're new. We have a new goal, 3,000. Why not, right? But we'll see you guys in the next video.